A lot of people tend to have this negative opinion about sitcoms. They see them as this low-level form of TV entertainment, filled with laugh tracks every five seconds, and being overly dramatic to ham up sad scenes. And with shows like Full House and Family Matters being the most famous and recognizable ones, it's pretty understandable when those two shows are what people think of first when they hear the word sitcom, and it just puts a bad taste in their mouth. I mean, look at this stuff. I gotta go. The Charles! Steph, you gotta swear to me. You can't tell anyone as long as you live. Ever. I thought what I went through tonight was the worst thing that's ever happened to me. But I was wrong. Not having my own father believe me is even worse. But sitcoms weren't always like this. They knew how to cut the laugh tracks and knew that they didn't need a hammy soundtrack to prove to viewers that things were not okay. I'll be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that. Because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? Oh yeah, that's right, Fresh Prince had way more than just a catchy theme song. Now the success of Full House's sappy safeness and wholesomeness had an unfortunate effect on sitcoms to come. Unable to be taken seriously, one-dimensional characters that are lesson of the week fodder, and lazy jokes that are way too safe to the point where even toddlers wouldn't chuckle at them. However, not all sitcoms face the wrath of Full House. Some still do know how to have a quiet moment. By the way, sorry I don't show this clip, the only high quality one I could find has all these overlays and is in Spanish. And some can still honestly make you laugh. If any show can prove that sitcoms still work, it's That 70s Show. Now despite the timeline of the show taking place decades before many of us were born, it still manages to be a pretty relatable coming of age story. It doesn't cram a ton of references in your face to make sure you know what time period it takes place in. You just get the feel for it on your own with how the world is set up. And you'll probably understand the few references they do make now and then anyways. Now before I talk about the show itself, let's go a bit behind the scenes for some interesting stuff that may help draw you in. The cast of this show is absolutely insane. For many big time actors, this was their first role or their big break that helped get them to where they are today. Ashton Kutcher, Laura Prepon, Wilmer Valderrama, Mila Kunis. That 70s show truly had an all-star cast, and Topher Grace. Ooh, my spider sense is tingling. <gasps> if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, after watching this show, you're never going to be able to take Spider-Man 3 seriously again. Well, as seriously as you could take it. Anyways, back to about the show. Now, because the show takes place in the 70s, they actually pay attention to what year and what time things are happening. And as a result, unlike many sitcoms, this has good continuity that actually builds up to stuff that you look forward to. There are tons of episodical and seasonal arcs that characters go through, or series-long arcs of how these dorky teens grow into mature adults. I'll get to a specific character later on. Enough stalling, though. A sitcom is a situation comedy. So... How is the comedy? JC, your lover's here! <laughs> you my one brother, you're gonna do it with us. Hitting a guy with a banjo is dirty. You wanna knee him in the groin? You can hit him in the groin with a banjo. <laughs> so what'd they get you for? For loving me. <laughs> Cause she's like 14? I'd say pretty darn good. Those aren't even the best moments. But don't worry, they do more than just standing around wisecracking at each other. Things do get physical. She's a bitch. Oh, no. I don't know what to say, man. What about ow? Why would I say ow? Oh. <laughs> I get it. Change it back. No! <laughs> oh, my eye! Because this was much of the cast's first performances and they all grew up together as teens, this show has a very special feel that not many other shows can replicate, not just sitcoms. You can tell all the people on screen are best friends and are genuinely having a good time. 
So much so that many of their ad-libs and outtakes end up making it into the final cuts because they're just good friends goofing off. Some of the stuff you're seeing on screen right now wasn't scripted. Now I will say that there is a downside when it comes to this being much of the cast's first roles. Throughout the first couple of episodes you can tell they're inexperienced or nervous. And there are some scenes that just feel really awkward and as much as I hate to use this word, cringy. Ashton Kutcher even felt so bad about it that he thought he was gonna get fired after the first five episodes. But, after just a couple episodes into the first season, you'll start to see them get better and better, and watch these amazing talents develop right in front of you. Especially during those quiet and serious moments that so many sitcoms get wrong that I was making a big deal about at the beginning of this video. I can't be your second choice. <laughs> but you're not! Eric! <laughs> well, before I knew, I was at the hotel last night. I was really mad. There was this nurse. And... And what? I'm really sorry, okay? Yeah, some of these characters really will tear you apart as the series goes on. Eric growing to become a man and take responsibility for his life, becoming more independent. Red, the strict parent watching his son that he worked so hard raising to be responsible, growing more reckless and rebellious as he just wants to get out of there. Michael Kelso coming to terms with the fact that he's not going to be high school goofball forever, and that he has to find a girl to settle down with and get a job. This show just handles its characters very well, especially the fan favorites. Typically in a sitcom, they'll try and feature the fan favorite character more or give them the spotlight more in an attempt to increase viewership and ratings, often making the series about the fan favorite rather than the actual protagonist. We all saw this happen in Family Matters with Steve Urkel. But that 70s show doesn't have this problem. Fez is obviously the fan favorite character, yet the show keeps him right where he needs to be and right where the audience likes to see him. He's just a foreign exchange student trying to get used to America. They don't try to make him more than what he is, and they don't flanderize him to less of what we get to know him as. Trick or treat! <laughs> An apple? It's my candy, you son of a bitch! My personal favorite character, though, is Stephen Hyde. His character arc throughout the series is one of the most well-written and well-paced ones I've ever seen in a TV show. Now Hyde is the tough, who cares, conspiracy theorist of the group. He's from a very broken home. He never knew his real dad, his stepdad walked out on him when he was super young, and shortly after the show begins, his mom walks out on him. So Steven is basically left alone in his house to fend for himself. Eric's father, Red, discovers this and reluctantly brings Steven into his home, not wanting him to be unable to take care of himself or worse. Now despite how aloof, work-despising, society-hating that Hyde appears to be, you'd expect him to be lazy and just mooch off of Eric's family after they let him stay. But this wasn't the case. He immediately got a job and used a full paycheck to pay rent and help Eric's family out with the house since he would be staying there. As much as Hyde bottles up his feelings and doesn't like to talk about them, you can tell he feels guilty that Eric's family has to take care of him, and he's doing everything he can to make sure that he doesn't turn out like his own family. Watching him keep to himself and silently attempt to make something of his life is just very interesting to watch, especially with how he interacts towards the rest of the cast, acting as if they're the ones that need him when in reality he needs them the most. I mean, you know, that's what my dad did, my uncle did, my cousins did. They were all on their own when they were my age. What are they doing now? Uh, pumping gas, prison, prison, dead, prison. <laughs> and the reason you're living here is so you don't end up like them. So with an all-star cast, lots of different kinds of humor that'll make lots of different people laugh, Knowing how to play it serious, and having such diverse and well-developed characters, I definitely think you should give That 70s Show a watch. It is proof that post-Full House sitcoms can still be good. If you're a fan of stuff like Drake and Josh, or Everybody Hates Chris, then That 70s Show might end up becoming one of your favorites too. The show also just recently passed its 20-year anniversary, so be sure to celebrate by checking it out yourself. The full series is both on tons of DVDs and Blu-rays, and on Netflix. So really, you have no excuse. Go watch it. Good day. I say good day. You morons just hung vacancy signs on your asses, and my foot's looking for a room.